Welcome to Plant City Bonsai. I'm Steve Craddy. Welcome to our holiday video. I'd like to talk about trotted maples. This magnificent specimen tree is actually from Japan, many years old, many, many years old. I've seen this tree quadruple in size from a, a pot that was probably nine inches from the very first time I potted it to now it's in a 24 inch pot. So it's just a monster tree. The roots that are look, you're looking at now, uh, you know, are between a half to an, an inch plus. They've, they've uh, grown that much forming this exposed root system. Uh, Trotted is, is, is so magnificent in all the styles. This is probably the most unusual style you'll ever see. And uh, it's just, it's, it's just unbelievable. Another great example of trotted maple. Uh, this is a uh, prime example of the, the fruits of your labor of putting this tree over this beautiful stone. 50 years later, it's melted onto the tree. Quite a, quite a feat, I would say. Just to give you a little bit of history of the tree, this was actually originally done by Warren Hill, very famous bonsai master. This would be the perfect tree to have for your collection if you want one that's 90% finished. This one's 90 to 95% finished. Over the years, the, there's been some larger limbs allowed to develop. So it would be, my attack would be to strategically remove the thicker limbs. And, uh, but we're talking like maybe two, two years and you'll be exactly where you want to be. This next tree is a Shishigashira Japanese maple. It's a favorite of many maple collectors. And I think the reason is because of the way it grows. Uh, it, it grows in a very unusual way with, with the uh, nodes very close. It has that really unusual uh, uh, greenish bark that is just, it's just such a contrast with the leaves. The leaves are actually almost a black green during the summer. It almost reminds you of, the tro of a tropical plant called a mingarelia. I don't know, it, it, at least it hits me that way. And uh, the fall color is a mixture of red, yellow, and orange. So it's just, it's got, it's got all the ingredients. I love it. Kishu Shimpaku. These trees form the most beautiful, long-lived trees of any other bonsai. Uh, this tree is uh, in the age group of around 30 to 40 years. The tree is super curvy and the, the branches, the branching is, uh, is, is kind of in, in near perfect placement on the outsides of the curves. It's very important for you want your, 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 uh, your branches to be on the outside of curves. This one meets that perfectly. And the, the future of the tree is developing the pads on those outside curves through pruning and wiring. It's just an excellent example of this artist's work. His name is Masuro Ishii. His son now runs a business in California. Gary Ishii is his name. And uh, uh, each of these trees is grafted onto roots of a San Jose juniper. It makes it a much stronger tree, uh, more resilient from its disease or insects. And uh, uh, again, I, I have to say it's, 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 it usually, when purchased by one of my clients, instantly becomes the most valuable tree in their collection. Azaleas, a favorite for bonsai artist beginners to, to uh, masters. Uh, this particular tree, it has all kinds of stuff going on. First of all, I'll tell you the variety. It's a Satsuki azalea. Uh, Satsuki means it blooms in the fifth month. And uh, it will truly, it has a couple of blooms sh 
showing off now, but the bulk of the blooms will, will occur in May. In May, you get a five-week bloom. Well, this tree will be covered in blooms. More than likely, it'll be a multi-bloom. One, one bloom will be white, the next will be, will be uh, red, and the other one will be pink. So you can have three colors on this tree, which makes it super spectacular. This tree has two names. They're both cool. One is Tiger Bark Ficus, and the other is Golden Gate Ficus. The example in front of us is one of many that I have that I'm offering for this season selection. All of them have a very cool twist, and most of them have wonderful exposed aerial rootage. And uh, it's just a great combination. And uh, we have them in several different sizes. I say it every day, it's the, it's the easiest to succeed with for an indoor bonsai. This tree has a very cool name. It's named Jabotacaba. It has a, it is actually from Brazil. And we love it for bonsai because it doesn't look like your typical tropical tree. It actually looks like a tree that you would uh, just see outside in Georgia, uh, uh, really resembling a crepe myrtle. And, uh, but this tree is very happy, easy to take care of, lives indoors. It has, the, it has several amazing attributes. When the trunks, they naturally contort, and, and uh, when they, they hit a certain age, it could be as early as 10 years up to you know, 25 years, they will start producing fruits. They are on the new foliage on the, each limb. They are actually in the crotch of the branches, or the trunk rather, I should say. So it's really very unique to see one of these happen. Let's just do this thing. Yeah, let's do it. We are about to view some beautiful trees in the evening. And we're, go we're gonna go to the glass house first. It's just chock full of awesome trees, Japanese garden. Can't wait to show you many things there. And maybe we'll end up in the uh, hot house where there are s several tropical indoor bonsai for gift giving. Let's, let's move into the glass house where I have so many things I want to show you. Now is the time to appreciate the drama of silhouette bonsai. We, we, this is for our uh, deciduous trees. It allows you to see the bones of the trees and to see to, to really to fully appreciate them. And we have several of them that I'd like to show you. When we move into the glass house with a lot of our trees that we want to give a little bit of protection, protection to, uh, I get kind of excited because I really enjoy seeing the trees at night. And uh, uh, we're so fortunate to have a, a fabulous group of trees uh, uh, that that are in their dormant mode. This is a uh, Sharps Pygmy Japanese Maple, nice heavy trunk, uh, just a, a beautiful specimen, beautiful base. Next to it is a uh, American Hornbeam, and this is just an unbelievable shape even summer or, or uh, dormant time. It's just a fabulous shape. But this time of year, you can just enjoy every, every twist and turn, every little branch that's been very well ramified. Uh, just, it's just a, it's a real turn on. Next tree is my, my Chinese elm, imported from China. It's, uh, it's glued to this, these, this very sturdy rock. Uh, it's just a, a fabulous, accomplishment. Next, a trident maple. Next to it is a Stewardia monodelpha. Beautiful uh, base. Uh, without the leaves, you can, you can appreciate uh, two things. You can appreciate the beautiful branching and also 
the buds that at, the, at each branch tip almost turn a snow white in the wintertime. Just, it's just a fabulous accomplishment. And then uh, here's a, a, a clump style or a small grove of uh, dwarf ginkgo trees. This next group of trees are my newest additions of the mainly Kishu and Itogawa Shimpaku. Uh, beautiful examples, these are from uh, Los Angeles, California, and uh, this, this particular tree here is very, extremely old, extremely strong. Uh, there's so many things to love about this tree, it's hard to, to describe them all, but the movement, the, the swell buttress, and the branch placement, just a very, super rugged tree. It's just, uh, it's just, it's, a, it's amazing. This next specimen is an Itogawa. If you can view the bend in this tree, it's, it's, it's just, it seems impossible, but it's been accomplished, and I just love it. This is your typical Kishu here. We have several other examples of Kishu. Uh, this tree here just drives me crazy. It's a, it's a rather tall, uh, it's also a Kishu, but the movement is just awesome. And uh, uh, this is, this is a, a blue ribbon bonsai tree in the future. I always like to have a good selection of King's Hill boxwoods. It kind of goes back to my beginnings in, 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 in the bonsai. Uh, this year is no exception. We have many finished trees, many finished specimens. We have a, fair, a, a, a very large group of the pre-bonsai. A lot of people like to do their own King's Hill boxwoods because a boxwood sort of almost finished. You can kind of see the tree, what you're gonna do. And a lot of people like to put their signature on it and do their own. And so I'm, I've got that covered this season. And, uh, but the, the, uh, the next level, having some of them done, has many, many for you to look at. And uh, of course we have the specimens, uh, some that in this, viewing this video, you will recognize seeing them before, but there are also some new additions. So I'm just, I, I'm uh, proud of them. The next group of, of trees I want to talk about are the Harlandi boxwoods. I get more excited about th this plant every season. It's like, it's sort of like the bulletproof success tree for people getting into bonsai, especially for ones, people wanting ones that, that bloom beautifully. And this tree, this tree gives us so many uh, attributes, or has so many att attributes. This, the top of this tree, it's probably 150 buds that are that are going to happen in early spring. The, the tree on its own, just by nature, forms a corky bark trunk at a very very young age. It just it's just it's just the perfect plant to use. Uh, I have in the raw or pre bonsai, let's call them pre bonsai form, I have literally hundreds of these. And uh, uh, I'm just so excited to have a nice group of these. The, I uh, wanted to point out a couple that I've just potted earlier. And uh, this one's ready to ramify by clearing out some of the branches. But just you can, with this one, you can see the corky trunk. You can see how the, the, it flares and tapers. Uh, it's, it's what we want out of bonsai. This next group of trees I'd like to mention, uh, these just arrived uh, recently. Uh, this is a Chinese elm. It's actually imported from China. And uh, these are extra nice. They have nice little fat trunks. I love when you can do a, you know, not a mame, but a very, very short shoheen with an elm because they're always twiggy and uh, 
uh, they, they pretty much look instantly cool. Uh, so we have a pretty nice group of these, and uh, uh, it seems that, that these are really holding, you know, we've had some cold, cool, cold weather the last several days, and these are holding up beautifully. Uh, so uh, I'm really excited about that. Uh, it's a great tree uh, to ramify, and you can see your results pretty quickly. This is a trident maple, and it's been done in the root over rock style. It takes several years to accomplish this. Just an excellent example. Uh, after reaching the point where you, you feel like your, your roots are kind of melted onto the rock, then you can start building your tree. And this one already has some nice bends in it. And uh, uh, in another couple of years, it'll be certainly a specimen to be proud of. Next to it is a, another trident maple forest, a smaller one than this first one that we, looked, that we talked about. Uh, it's, I forget from year to year how, how much more dramatic a, a forest planting is when you can actually look in and see the tree placement, see that you've got, you have different distances, things that, uh, factors that make this such a dramatic style of bonsai. Love this one. During this time of year, I like to have a good selection of entry level trees. I hate for people to drive long, long distances to see just a few offerings. So we go out of our way to start back in the summer producing these for the holiday season. And uh, these are some pretty cool trees. They, uh, some have been wired. They've all been kind of pr pruned and thinned out. So uh, they make a great gift. Now let's visit the uh, Japanese garden. This has been a really a fun video to do. Challenging a little bit with the weather and everything, but uh, it's been a fun one. And uh, we're in the, out here in the Japanese garden, my favorite spot. Love to tour this with a glass of something when, in the evenings. And uh, uh, I appreciate your taking the time to, to, to view this. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you soon, hopefully having you visit here. So thank you. It's been a very difficult year for everyone. And I'm so thankful that I have bonsai in my life. I'm glad that we're able to, to spread the passion of this art form. Hopefully make a difference in everyone's life. Thank you for everything you do for us.